Okay, so welcome everyone today. This is the dynamics of robot mechanics mechanisms uh, class, uh, and today we will have, a, we will have an example. So we will summarize, every, uh, uh, summarize everything again about serial robots. And there will be some equations, so you will see again how the equations are derived. And again, please ask if something is uh, not clear. So let's go on. First. should have a very quick reminder so what we had last time is the so-called Newton Euler equation which has two different iteration steps and the first iteration was called the first iteration step was called forward iteration which is basically the kinematic calculation of the robot so in the forward iteration we go joint by joint along the robot and we can create the kinematic equations which means that we have we can define the joint variables for example joint angles or if we have translational joints then some joint uh, distances and if we have these so-called joint variables If we have the joint variables, then we are able to calculate these uh, tra homogeneous transformation matrices, which contains the position and orientation of each link of the robot. Link means the, the rigid body. And uh, if we have this uh, homogeneous transformation matrix, then we are able to calculate the velocity of the center of mass of each rigid body and we can calculate the angular velocity of each rigid body and also the acceleration of the center of mass and the angular acceleration of each link in the system so we have everything 
which are needed for the kinetic equations and we also need these things to the to the dynamic equations which is basically the second iteration step so the second iteration step is called backward iteration and basically here we derive the dynamic equations and uh, here, having these uh, kinematic values, so if we know the, the angular velocity, the acceleration of the center of mass and the angular acceleration, we can uh, create some Newtonian equations, as we have seen last week, and uh, we can uh, calculate the joint forces and joint torques. Okay, so these are the joint forces and torques. And this is what we had last time, okay? And uh, before we go on with the example, just one more theoretical thing, which is basically, again, a, a, a reminder from, from vibration course. So here we obtain these, uh, these joint forces and torques by, by Newtonian equation, by basically the newton euler equations. But we can also create dynamic equations by using the Lagrange equation of motion. So the, the, the title before we go on with the example would be dynamic equations obtained by by the, the Lagrange equation of motion so this is one thing which could be also done so again we have the joint variables also we have the time derivative of them and then we can compute the homogeneous transformation matrices and we can uh, create again the kinematic uh, variables the velocity vector of the center of mass now I'm using matrix notation so I have to say that this vector is given in the zeros frame and we can also create the angular velocity but if we use the Lagrange equation of the second kind then we don't need the acceleration information we just need the, 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 the position data and the velocities okay so the velocity of each center of mass and the angular velocity because if we have these uh, kinematic data then we can compute the kinetic energy the potential function and we can calculate the, the virtual power of the external forces okay so this is the kinetic energy kinetic energy potential function and this last one is the, the power of the, the virtual power of the external forces or active forces so this is what we have done in the vibration course we had the velocities and positions and we could calculate these things and if we have these things that then we can just simply uh, derive the Lagrange equation of motion with this well-known formula I think this is familiar for, for everyone here and this, sorry, I have to remove this part and this is equal to Q 
QI. Okay, so we, know, we use the virtual power to compute the, the general force and we need the potential function and also the kinetic energy in these two places. So we can, we can calculate this uh, Lagrange equation of motion and uh, of course this is a set of equations because I goes from 1, 1 to n. So we have n joint variables. We can also say here that q is a vector of dimensions n. Okay, so we have n joint variables and consequently we can obtain n Lagrangian equations. And finally, the last step, we will see that uh, it's always possible to obtain a general form which is basically applicable for all mechanical systems. So each mechanical system can be put in this form where there is a mass matrix and then there is an acceleration vector. And additionally, we can have some forces which are coming from some inertial effects. So there are inertial forces here, but if you have springs and that, they can also put here. And uh, this thing is equal to, to the general force. Or, or you could say the control input, but later we will talk about the control input of the robots. Okay, so in this form, every mechanical system can can be put. So if you create Newtonian equations, the resulting equation can be transformed into this form. So this is the general form. And uh, we will obtain these equations for the for our example, which will be a two degrees of freedom robot. So please ask if something is not uh, clear here. So this was just an overview, I think. These are not new things. Maybe this one is a new form of the Lagrange equation, but uh, we will see how it works. Okay, and then if there is no question, then we move on with the example and uh, we will see everything in detail. I'll just keep it here for any case. Okay, so our example will be. Uh, Let's call it double pendulum robot. So this will be a two degrees of freedom robot. And uh, let's make the drawing of it. We will have a global coordinate system as always. So this is the first thing to have something which can be used as a reference frame or reference coordinate system and uh, this is the origin of it and then there will be a double pendulum fixed here so this is uh, the first one and this is the second one they are connected to each other with frictionless revolute joints. So these are ideal joints, ideal constraints. And uh, let's draw the other coordinate systems. So as we mentioned before, we can introduce some variables to describe the relative pose of the coordinate system. So we have two 
moving bars, two rigid links, and the numbering will be this is uh, this is one, and this is link number two. So therefore, we will go in our table from one to two, and uh, there will be an other coordinate system which moves together. So this is the global one. And the second, co the first coordinate system basically moves together with the first rigid bar. So this will be x i, and uh, y i, and of course there is a z axis which is perpendicular to the whiteboard. And uh, as you see here, there is only a rotational transformation between x0 and x1 and the origin of the two coordinate systems are the same so there is no any shifting in x direction so a parameter is zero but there is uh, an angular uh, an angular coordinate we can choose this one this will be q1 but as we can see first x was uh, tilted by 90 degrees and then minus 90 degrees and then we add Q1 so the tilt angle will be minus 90 degrees because we, which is pi over 2 plus uh, the first joint coordinate which is time dependent okay so this is our small table of parameters so with this we can describe the pose of this coordinate system number one and then secondly we can introduce another coordinate system here which moves together with rigid body number two and this will be axis x2 this is axis y2 and z2 is here of course and the angle or, or the joint parameter is uh, defined like this. So this will be Q2. You, you have to remember this small figure when we said that this is one coordinate system, let's say X, Y, I. And we said that the neighboring so coordinate system which can be xj and yj is obtained by a transformation which is a translation along a1 we can use this and also there is a an angle theta1 here so accordingly we can introduce our parameters here so there was a, a linear transformation along this length and let's introduce it this is l1 so a1 is equal to this distance which is l1 and this angle here is simply q2 so this is the second joint variable and with this small table we can uh, uniquely define the, the kinematics of our uh, open kinematic chain system okay so this is the basically the the kinematic structure and one thing to mention that uh, axis x1 was unique because it has to it has to go through this axis this joint and also this joint because otherwise i cannot uh, put together the whole system but axis x2 could be tilted in any other orientation but this was the the most clear uh, scenario let's say so so this is just the notation that x2 orientation x2 orientation was not unique it 
it is our choice so I could put it like this or this it doesn't matter but this is a very nice choice because at the end of the robot there will be a so-called PCP because the which is the the tool center point for example there is a grasper or something and the task of the robot is to to, to maintain the positioning of this point in, in the plane. Okay, so that's that's the task of the robot. Okay, and let's go step by step. So we would like to obtain the dynamic equations of this robot. And the first thing is to do the, the so-called forward iteration. And this is the first step of the Newton Euler recursion. So that's the first thing. Okay, so forward iteration means that uh, we collect our joint coordinates. So we put everything into a vector for the sake of simplicity. So Q1 and Q2 are put in a vector of two dimensions. So we know that uh, m equals to 2. This is the number of joints and also the number of coordinates. And then, as we said before, there is a transformation matrix for each uh, neighboring coordinate system. And in general, it was like TJI. Maybe the, the, the notation was different, but it doesn't matter now. So if I want to transform from here to here, then the transformation matrix will be... Oh, sorry. If it is J here, then it should be theta J and A J, because the indexing is the same as this coordinate system. So the homogeneous transformation matrix in general looks like this. So there is the, the, the linear transformation in this position vector here and in the rotation matrix part of this homogeneous transformation matrix there is the cosine and sine of the theta angle so it was cosine theta j minus sine theta j sine theta j and cosine theta j. So this is the general form of the homogeneous transformation matrix and our task is very simple now so we can just substitute the parameters from here to the general form of the homogeneous transformation matrix. So let's see how the first one looks like so the first, which transforms from the first coordinate system to the to the global one, is uh, is obtained by substituting zero into a. So this will be zero zero zero. The last row is always the same, and the rotational part will contain q one minus pi over 2 everywhere, so cosine will be sine and sine will be cosine, so this will be sine q1, this is cosine q1, this is cosine q1 and this is sine q1 and the other parts are the same and uh, this will be minus for now. So this is the homogeneous transformation matrix for the, the neighboring 1 and 0 coordinate frame and the second homogeneous transformation matrix uh, provides the transformation between 1 and 2 so that's why the indexing is 2 and 1 and this part is always the same and uh, L1 must be substituted here, so this is L1 here. And into the rotational part, instead of theta j, we just simply substitute Q2. 
So this will be cosine q2 minus sine q2 0 sine q2 cosine q2 0 0 0, zero and 1. So this is the homogeneous transformation matrix which transforms from 2 to 1. And we will need later for the transformation matrix for each link which transforms directly to the global coordinate frame and we already have it for the first coordinate system so from first to the zeros which is the global it is fine and uh, we need it for the second link too and that's why it is a forward iteration because you can just do it one by one going along the robot joints so we need the transformation matrix for each link which transforms directly to the global coordinate system okay so zero is the global and it is obtained by just multiplying the homogeneous transformation matrices one by one so that's why it is called a forward step because we can do it forward sequentially and uh, the resulting matrix will be something bit more complicated but not very complicated fortunately so this is always the same this is l1 sine q1 and l1 cosine q1 here and zero but this should be minus so if you just multiply them so this is just multiplied with sine and then minus cosine so that's why we obtain minus there but it also fits to our, our visual checking so this column means the position of the origin of the second coordinate system and this is really l1 times the sine q1 in x direction and minus L1 times cosine Q1 in the vertical direction. So it really fits to our global picture. And if you multiply these two rotational parts, then uh, it's a bit more complicated how to arrive here, but uh, finally you will obtain sine Q1 plus Q2 cosine q1 plus q2 0 minus cosine q1 plus q2 sine q1 plus q2 and 0 0 0 1 okay so the notation here is that s12 equals to sine q1 plus q2 and c12 equals to cosine q1 plus q2 Okay, so finally we can have these uh, transformation matrices and these provide us the transformation from each link directly to the global coordinate frame. So this is very nice and uh, we can move towards the calculation of the tool center point position because we will need it because something is missing from the figure so we will include the external forces into our dynamic equations and we say that there is a force acting on the robot and this is called F load okay this is a loading force and it acts on the TCP position so that's why we need the TCP velocity because we want to calculate the, the virtual power of this loading force later and we also need the torque which may act on the tools the, the last link basically okay so there is also a loading torque which acts on the last rigid link of the robot so we have both and therefore we need the TCP velocity and in the Lagrangian equation we will need the position of the center of mass 
for each rigid body and the, the acceleration of the center of mass of each rigid body in the Newtonian equations. Yes, and in the Lagrangian equation we also need the velocity of each center of mass. So let's go and uh, try to calculate everything. So, as we said, we will need the TCT position and velocity. So let's calculate it. The technique is always the same. We would like to obtain the TCT position in the global frame. So we take the transformation matrix which transforms from the second to the global one and we multiply it with the or sorry the, the TCP position is multiplied with it and this TCP position is given in the so-called local frame or in the second frame so it's always a constant vector and time invariant vector in the local frame so finally we can say that uh, this vector looks like uh, so the TCP position is given in the x direction and I have to introduce some geometric parameters so the length of the second bar will be L2 this is the first point when we need it okay so L2 is the x coordinate of the RTCP in the local frame and in y and z direction it is 0 so this is 0 0 but this is a homogeneous representation of the vector so there is a there is a one at the end and uh, if you create if you carry out this multiplication you will have something which starts with this thing here because this thing is the position vector of the origin of the second coordinate system so you can just analyze what you obtain after multiplication of this matrix and vector and then additionally there will be some other terms and uh, it will be I think this is plus L2 and minus L2 times the sum of the two angles so sine q1 plus q2 and cosine q1 plus q2 if I remember well so this is plus L2 yeah this is correct and we can close the bracket okay so you, you multiply it and then what you obtain is is basically obvious with this very simple example but uh, you can generalize this whole thing for very complicated robots okay so this is the origin of the center of, of the origin of the sorry this is the position of the origin of coordinate system 2 and this small vector is just the vector from here to here expressed in the global coordinate system okay and we have it later we will have to time differentiate it and now let's remove everything which what's, what is unnecessary and now we should calculate the center of mass position we will need the, the, the center of mass position later so everything goes in the same way so the center of mass of the first rigid body this is I don't have enough space but this is in the middle this is C1 and this is C2 it's in the middle of the bar officially so this is just uh, obtained by T10 times RC1 given in the first coordinate system so we use the first transformation matrix because we transform from the first one to the global one and in the first coordinate system it is very easy to express the position of the center of mass because it is just L1 over 2 in x direction L1 over 2 and 0, 0 in other directions and 
there is a one at the end because this is a homogeneous representation of the vector and finally you will obtain something similar like this so it should be something like l1 over 2 times sine q1 and l1 over 2 times cosine q1 and 0 and this is homogeneous form so there is a there is a one at the end and this is minus here okay and you do the same for the second rc2 is obtained by t20 times rc2 but first we just express it in its local coordinate system so this is this is uh, l2 over 2 0 0 and 1 and now we multiply this vector with this homogeneous transformation matrix and uh, it will be it will be very similar to the tool center point position the only difference will be that finally we don't multiply with l2 but we multiply with l2 over 2 so we can basically copy this formula here from here and uh, instead of l2 we should say l2 over 2 so this is homogeneous vector homogeneous representation of the vector so there is a one here zero in z direction and l1 sine 1 minus l1 cosine q1 in x direction and y direction and additionally there is plus minus l2 over 2 l2 over 2 times sine q1 plus q2 and cosine q1 plus q2 so this is the homogeneous representation of the position vector of the second center of mass so everything what we need is given in the in the global frame and we also need the angular positions of each link so we we'll need it's quite trivial in planar example spatial problems it's not so easy so we will need the the absolute angles So absolute angle is not a very meaningful thing in three-dimensional problems but in this planar case we can say that absolute angle is, is just the angle measured from the x coordinate axis so this is x0 and, and alpha will be measured from x okay and uh, we can basically obtain it by comparing so yeah we can just obtain it by looking the figure or if we want to do some more algorithmic uh, calculation then we can say that the the rotation matrix of each link should be something like uh, cosine alpha i i will now just uh, show it how it looks like in detail minus sine alpha i sine alpha i and cosine alpha i and 0 0 1 0 0 and we can compare our transformation our homogeneous transformation matrices with this uh, rotation matrix which is which represents this kind of rotation with this absolute angle so in the first case our homogeneous transformation matrix contain a okay I, I have to write it down again so we compare this rotation matrix it is compared with the T10 homogeneous transformation matrix in which uh, it's not important what's here and here and here 
but the rotational part is important. It was sine 1, cosine 1, 0, minus cosine q1, sine q1, 0, 0, 0, 1. And if you compare them, then you clearly see that uh, cosine alpha stands for sine q1. So therefore we can say that uh, alpha 1, the absolute angle of the first link is just q1 minus pi over 2 which is quite trivial having the figure but uh, I say again in more complicated problems it's uh, very simple and the second homogeneous transformation matrix was again we don't care about the, the, the linear transformation and also the homogeneous part but uh, it was uh, sine q1 q2 cosine q1 plus q2 and minus cosine q1 plus q2 sine q1 plus q2 0 0 and 1 so this was the second homogeneous transformation matrix so finally we say that the absolute angle of the second rigid body is a uh, is q1 plus q2 minus pi over 2 Leave me alone. This is 3, don't want you to see this formula. So alpha 2, which is the absolute angle of the second rigid body, is really q1 plus q2 minus the 90 degrees. So we have these four. And now we really have everything in the position level. And now, we please ask if something is not clear, but I think it's quite detailed. And uh, now let's move on with the velocities. So first, we calculate the first, first time derivative of everything. And then, we can go on with the accelerations. So these are the first time derivatives. So for example, V, T, C, P is obtained by RTCP differentiated by time and uh, we'll show how it looks like so it will q1 dot times l1 times cosine 1 if you if you have notes of this lecture then you can go back and check it but I'm not really able to do it and uh, q1 plus q2 dot times uh, l2 times cosine q1 plus q2 so there was l1 times sine q1 here and it's time differentiated form is l1 times cosine q1 times q1 dot because of the chain rule so this is how we obtain this and originally it was L2 times sine Q1 plus Q2 and the differentiated sine is cosine and we have to multiply with the time derivative of the function inside the sine which was Q1 plus Q2 and its time derivative is Q1 dot plus Q2 dot so it's uh, simply just differentiating everything so I, I will not detail each of the, the vectors but this one could be and this is the same we have to change the cosine to sine and we don't care about the homogeneous form anymore because we will not have homogeneous transformations in subsequent uh, calculations so we don't need them we just have these uh, three element matrix of the vector okay let's check it so the two center point velocity really looks like this so this is q1 dot times uh, l1 which is basically the velocity of this point so this is the velocity of the second origin and additionally we have another 
part of the velocity vector which comes here and this is the addition of the two angular velocities and we need the, the length of the second line. Okay, so everything is nice and the second, sorry, the, 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 this is what we really need for the for the Lagrangian equations. Again, you can just simply apply time differentiation This one is easy, this was L1 times sine Q1 and the time derivative is L1 sorry, over 2 and the derivative of sine is cosine and we have to multiply with the function inside because of the chain rule and this will be very similar in the vertical direction and final zero in in z-direction, so this is the velocity for the second center of mass and the third center of mass velocity will be almost the same what we have here but we have to use L over 2 so this is Q1 dot Q1 dot L1 L1 cosine and sine Q1 plus and this term is almost the same Q1 plus Q2 dot this is the same q1 plus q2 dot this is basically an angular velocity this is the absolute angular velocity we will see later and instead of l we should say l over l2 over 2 times cosine and sine q1 plus q2 and finally this is, this is zero okay so this is these are the velocities it is simple total time differentiation and we also need in the Lagrange equation for the angular velocities so these, these are all vectors and the angular velocity vector will be 0, 0 and q1 dot sorry, and uh, yeah, so this was okay, we, we can just say that uh, 0, 0 and this is d over dt the, the absolute angle of the first rigid body and this will give us so alpha 1 was uh, minus pi over 2 plus q1 and its time derivative is just simply q1 dot because pi over 2 is constant and similarly omega 2 will be obtained from the, the absolute angle of the second rigid body So this will be 0, 0 and q1 dot plus q2 dot. Please go back in your notes to the absolute angle of the second body and check if everything is clear here. Okay, so these are the the, the uh, velocity level information and then we can go to the acceleration level so to the second time derivatives and uh, sorry i didn't want to remove it so this was the velocity of the first center of mass i just keep it here because we really don't do everything for the acceleration level okay so second time derivatives this will be homework so the TCP acceleration is just obtained by the time derivative of the TCP velocity and the center of mass for the first rigid body can be obtained, so the acceleration here can be obtained by the time differentiation of this vector sorry so it is uh, the time derivative of the velocity of the first center of mass and uh, we just do it because it is not so complicated 
So this will be L1 over 2 times and I will take the first term and differentiate it by time and then the second term and then I will have to, to take the first term which is Q1 dot and then time differentiate the second term so this will be cosine is minus sine so this is minus sine Q1 times because of the chain rule times Q1 dot again so this will be Q1 dot square and we will have something like this and this is the same for the second term so this is L O L1 over 2 times again the time derivative of the first term times the, the second term and additionally we have the first term multiplied with the time derivative of the second term which is just cosine q1 times q sorry this is this is q1 here <laughs> yeah. okay so q1 dot times uh, cosine q1 times q1 dot so this is square again and this is the acceleration for the second rigid body for the center of mass and also the the second is obtained by, by in a similar way so it is also homework okay so you can calculate it at home this acceleration and also you can calculate this derivative at home and actually it will be uploaded into the Moodle system so you can check the equation but uh, we don't equations but we don't waste the time with it now so these are the acceleration for this point and the two center of mass points and we also need basically the angular acceleration for each rigid body so the first rigid body has the angular acceleration which is the time derivative of omega 1 and it is quite simple so this is just 0 0 q1 double dot it's coming from here and similarly the angular acceleration for the second rigid body will be omega 2 dot which is so this is a 0 here omega 2 given in 0 and time derivative of it and it will be 0 0 and q1 double dot plus q2 double dot that's it so we have everything what we need for the acceleration level and uh, with this we basically finish the so-called forward iteration step because everything in kinematics is obtained and then we go on with the if there is no question I wait a bit again so if no question then we can uh, we can go on with the backward iteration step which is the calculation of the joint forces and the joint torques with the Newtonian equations and then lastly we will take a look on the Lagrangian equations so now this is the so-called backward iteration step And uh, okay, there was a question. Yeah, uh, I think I corrected this. There was just a comment about the the Q one Q one in the in the y, y the vertical component of the velocity here, but it was corrected finally. So, and it was acceleration. So in the acceleration, what we have calculated, everything was Q one because this was the acceleration of the 
center of mass of the first rigid body and it should depend only on q1, q1 dot and q1 double dot in general but it cannot depend on q2 so there was a mistake but I think I corrected it okay let's go on with the backward iteration step and for that first we use the Newtonian equation and uh, we need the free body diagrams first and this uh, so in the homework you can so the homework will be very similar to this problem what we addressed today and you can choose in the homework so we don't care how we solve it I mean with Newton or Lagrangian equations but one, one choice is to use Newtonian equations and then you need to take the the free body diagram for each link and uh, let's draw the accelerations first so there is the acceleration of the center of mass for the first rigid uh, body and we have the same for the second one C2y and A C2x. Okay, so this is the center of mass acceleration because in the Newtonian equations we always need the center of mass acceleration and no any other point can be used. And also we have the we need a lot of empty space, so I just draw this epsilon one file away. <coughs> excuse me and then we also need the angular acceleration of the second uh, rigid body in general we would need the angular velocity as well but in planar problems we don't need them and let's see the the forces acting on the system so the easy part is that there is gravitational force for each uh, link sorry this is m2 times g and uh, there is the loading on the second uh, rigid body so i will just decompose it for x and y direction component and also we can just take the the torque which is a positive torque loading torque so these are acting on the tool center point so we can just draw it here so this is the tool center point and these forces are acting in the tool center point because the end of the robot is the is the point with which the environment can be can be interacted okay so you can apply forces on the robot basically in the tool center point of course you can touch the environment with other parts of the robot but that's usually an accidental thing and not a normal operation okay and uh, we need to consider the joint forces and joint torques and by definition we say that for the first link so this is link number one the first joint torque which is related to the first joint axis is positive so this is m1 and this is the same for the second link so this is link number two so m2 which is acting on in the first in the second joint is positive in the second link and the reaction torque is taken into account also but this is opposite direction and we also have some forces in the joints and they are also positive in the corresponding rigid body so this is f1x and f1y and this is the same here this is f2y and f2x these are the joint forces 
but if we have f2x and f2y then the reaction forces must be included in the free body diagrams so this is f2x acting in negative direction and sorry it's opposite yeah and this is f1 x x sorry this is this is no this is f2y every index was just mixed up uh, this is f2y and uh, i think uh, there is no other forces so these are the free body diagrams and one additional information that uh, we will need the uh, the, the mass moment of inertia calculated in the center of mass so this is c1 this is c2 and c1 this the the mass moment of inertia mass moment of inertia is 1 over 12 times l1 squared times m1 and this is the same formula for the second rigid body. This is capital theta 2, which equals to 1 over 12 times L2 squared times M2. This is the mass moment of inertia for the second rigid body. And finally, we can obtain the Newtonian equations. Okay, so we, uh, we will have rigid body number 1 and rigid body number 2. And uh, both will possess x, y, and z. So we are in a planar problem. That's why there is no six equation for each rigid body. There is only three equations for each rigid body. And the first two is the basically about the, the change of change of the impulse. So it's. Uh, m1 times the acceleration in both directions which is equal to the sum of the forces so this is quite easy to, to say that this is f1x minus f2x nothing else and in vertical direction it is f2x sorry f1y minus f2y and we also have to consider the gravitational force and uh, let's go to the same equations for the second rigid body because we are involved in acceleration terms and forces so this is this is the acceleration what we calculated before so it is a very complicated term of of q1 q1 dot and q1 double dot and q2 q2 dot and q2 double dot so these are complicated functions of q q dot and q double dot in general but you can just put it here and then you will have the equation okay for the second rigid body it is uh, very similar we have the joint force in the second joint but uh, instead of minus in positive direction we have the loading force in x and y direction and we have the gravity m2 times g And with this we are ready with the forces and accelerations and uh, now we have to consider the third equation for each rigid body so theta c1 theta c2 times the angular acceleration which is again expre expressed with the with the, the joint accelerations right so epsilon 1 was just equal to q1 double dot and epsilon 2 was equal to q1 double that plus q2 double that but we don't want to waste the space here but we have to know that these are functions of the 
joint accelerations, joint positions and joint velocities. Okay, first uh, we should take into consideration the, the, the torques because that's the easier part. So M1 is acting positively and M2 is acting in positive direction in the joints. Uh, and this is the reaction joint torque here, M2. But here in the last rigid link there is the loading torque. And uh, then we have to consider the torque or moment of the forces calculated to the center of mass. And uh, I just collected the terms. So in the first equation there is minus uh, L1 over 2 times C1. L1 over 2 times C1. times F1x plus F2x and there is another term which is very similar minus L1 over 2 times sine Q1 times F1y plus F2y and why are these terms are here so for example the moment of F1x to the center of mass is equal to F1x times this distance here which is really Q1 times cosine sorry cosine Q1 times L1 over 2 okay so this is the length of the vector and this is the force and this is the same for for each other parts and uh, basically we have the same for for this last equation so this will be oops this will be l2 over 2 times cosine q1 plus q2 times f1x and at, uh, at the end it must be opposite sign so the loading force should be considered with negative sign and plus or instead minus I am running out of space so this is minus L2 over 2 times uh, sine q1 plus q2 times f1y sorry this is f2x minus the loading force and this is f2y minus the loading force in the vertical direction sorry this is A bit small here but you can find it out this is just the torque of the or the moment of the the forces acting on the center of mass and with this you obtained the dynamic equations we have six for these two rigid planar bodies so six dynamic equations and you have two choices so you can just express the joint uh, forces or torques so we can again calculate the number of independent uh, number of unknowns so this is unknown this is also unknown these reaction forces are unknown and uh, this is also unknown and this is unknown too and the torque is unknown and these forces appear here as well 
and here so they are all over in the equations and f2x f2y is also unknown and m2 is also unknown and these terms are again oops f load is not unknown but this term here is unknown again so this is six unknowns which is f1x f1y m1 and f2x f2y and m2 so this is one choice to just simply calculate these joint forces or you can regard these equations as a differential equation because everything here depends on q q dot and q double dot so these are just simply second order second order ordinary differential equations so you can solve it and simulate the motion of the robot maybe in the homework you have to do that so this is the first uh, year of this uh, subject so that's why the homework is not uh, really ready but uh, i think uh, it will be included in the task to solve somehow these equations and then we will have the complete understanding of the meaning of these equations <coughs> okay and uh, one more thing We can collect the joint uh, loads or joint forces exerted by the, the, the actuators or motors of the robot. Okay, so, so let's check again the joint loads. So we say that, or, or you, you can, so if you have a system, you have to consider your actuators. Actuator means the motor which moves the system and here basically we should put a motor here and another motor should be put here and these motors basically exert the torque M1 and the torque M2 and, uh, and they should be collected in a vector. Okay, so the motor, motor torques or forces if you have a linear motor, then you, have, you will have a motor force are collected and motor also can be called as actuator because it actuates your system, it makes it moving, okay? So actuator torques and forces are collected and in our case it's very simple, so the, the M1 and M2 are the two torques which are generated by, by motors. Okay, so motor 1 exerts M1 and motor 2 exerts M2. And the other joint forces, as you can see, are just simply reaction forces. And the main difference is that these torques have a power, okay, they have mechanical power and uh, the other joint forces and torques possibly are the reaction torques okay so these are the the active forces and torques and there are also reaction torques and forces and for example in our case the motor which is placed here doesn't have to do anything with this force and this force okay it's just not related to motor they, they are uh, produced these reaction forces are exerted by the, by the bearings okay and the bearing can maintain the reaction forces but not the motor okay So usually these reaction forces are exerted by the bearings. For example, now these are 
f1x, f2x, or f1y would be more logic, f2x and f2y. So these four forces are just reaction forces and uh, okay we can underline the important thing these are the motor torques and forces and these are the reaction torques and reaction forces and the main thing is that they don't have mechanical power that's very important Okay, they don't have mechanical power, you can uh, check, for example, any of them, but uh, we can check for, for example, F1X. Okay, so they don't have mechanical power, for example, we can check it for F1X, so there is a, how it looks, sorry, it's, it's not the best, F2X would be more nice so this is f2x acting on this rigid body and this is the other rigid body where f2x acts in the opposite direction and the sum of the power or virtual power of these forces are are f2x times the velocity of this term uh, okay sorry let's uh, let's use a uh, vector notation so this is the actually we can we can basically use the whole f vector so the virtual power of f2 is f2 times this is a scalar product with the velocity of this point, this is point P2, okay, because this is the origin of the second coordinate system, so the P2 point and minus because the other vector acts in minus direction, minus the same velocity, because these two points have the same velocity, okay, the velocity is the same, these are the velocity terms, but the forces are opposite to each other. So finally it will be just equal to zero, okay? And you can check it for all of the reaction forces, but generally you can say this, which is very important. And, uh, and uh, finally we can just review how to obtain the same equations of motion with the Lagrange equation of the second kind. So that's it for the Newtonian equations. And this part was quite important actually to, to make a difference between the active motor or actuator effort and between the reaction forces and torques. Okay, so So the last thing what we do today is to obtain the equation of motion. We just review the main steps how to obtain the equations of motion by using the Lagrange equation. So basically we could say that this is an alternative for the, for the backward iteration. But basically we would like to obtain the equation of motion by the Lagrange equation and uh, as we said at the beginning if we have the transformation matrices and the joint velocities then we can calculate and we have already done it we can calculate the, the velocity for each center of mass so we can simply say that the kinetic energy is equal to 1 over 2 times the mass of each rigid body multiplied with the, with the velocity square 
of each rigid body and we also have a similar term containing the mass moment of inertia for each rigid body and actually this is unnecessary here because it's on the square we don't need it anymore and we have the, the square of the angular velocity and uh, this should be sorry this this is a sum and e goes from 1 to 2 now okay so for first and the second body we have to calculate it and add add them together and this will be you can just check how, how it looks like and some parts will be just uploaded into the Moodle in PDF so for example for the first rigid body it looks like 1 over 2 times m1 times l1 over 2 square which is l1 square over 4 times q1 dot square we clearly see that this is really the square of this uh, center of mass velocity here and then we will have another term which is 1 over 2 times theta c1 which is already calculated times the angular velocity which is q1 dot square and theta c1 also includes some l1 and m terms so you can just uh, somehow add them together and then this will be homework so this is m1 over 2 times m2 times a very very complicated not very very but uh, a bit complicated term which is homework to calculate this is the square of the second rigid body center of mass velocity okay this this is homework but it will be also uploaded and finally the last term is 1 over 2 times theta c theta, theta, theta c2 times q1 dot plus q2 dot square okay so this is the last term and this term was not calculated here because of the lack of space and time so you can check in the Moodle and you can calculate it for yourself it is the best way to practice in the homework actually you will have to do it and then you can also calculate the potential function which is uh, m1 times g1 times sorry there is just one gravitational acceleration that is g and this is m1 times times g times uh, the vertical position of the first center of mass given in the global frame plus m2 times the gravitational acceleration times the, the vertical position of the second center of mass and we can just uh, show the details it's not that complicated it will be minus one minus m1 times g times l1 over 2 times cosine q1 i think this fit this is this fits to our visual checking and then m1 m2 times g times uh, yeah, times l1 times cosine q1 which is the vertical position of point origin for the second coordinate system and additionally we have l2 over 2 times cosine q1 plus q2 so this is the potential function and uh, I think this is clear and, and the most complicated thing which is usually problematic is to 
write down the, the virtual power of the external forces except the gravity okay so this is the, the virtual power which is necessary for obtaining the general force vector so this is basically if you go back to the to the free body diagram maybe that that's the best to go back to the free body diagram i can get rid of it i think so the free free but just in a simplified version so there was a torque here m1 and there was a torque here m2 and m2 was also here and the uh, angular velocity so we want to calculate the power of these torques and the angular velocity was q1 dot and here the angular velocity was q1 dot plus q2 dot okay and actually we also had the the loading torque that's also an active torque so the, the power of these torques are uh, M1 plus, sorry, M1 minus M2 times uh, the angular velocity, which is Q1 dot. And for the other rigid body, you collect everything. So the power of all of the forces in the whole system. So this is M2 plus M loading torque times uh, q1 dot plus q2 dot which is the absolute uh, angular velocity for the second rigid body and finally we will have some active force here in the tool center point this is the loading force, so we will have to calculate it, plus F load with scalar product with the tool center point velocity, we said that we will need it, and uh, the gravity should be included, I just draw everything with dashed line, which is uh, not included in the power now so it is not included in the power because it was already included in the potential function so if you don't consider the potential function then you can include the gravity in the power but you have to choose okay and uh, it doesn't matter actually how do you do it but finally it should be fine okay and uh, And this term basically so not, nothing else yeah okay and 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 i will show the other forces so these are also not included because they are they are not active forces so they are not included in the virtual power because this is the virtual power of active forces and gravity may be here or or in the potential function okay gravity is here on or in the potential function u and the last thing here is that this term is uh, So this will be just F load X times the VTCP X component. I don't want to detail it. Plus F load Y times VTCP Y component. So this will be a bit complicated thing. Okay, so you can just calculate the virtual power of these uh, active forces and as a final step you 
can put together the Lagrange equation. So again, it looks like this u over dt times the derivative of the kinetic energy with each general coordinate. And then there is the derivative of the potential function. And it equals to qi, which is a uh, so th these terms I think easy, but Q will be, so for example, QI. So the question is how to cal calculate the components of Q. For example, QI is calculated as the coefficient, coefficient of uh, Q1 dot in, in the virtual power, what we already calculated here, okay? And Q2, or, or you can generalize our formula. So QI equals to the coefficient of Q dot I in the virtual power. So for our system, Q will be equal to the coefficient of Q, Q1 dot. So M1 minus M2 plus this whole thing here. We can just uh, get rid of it, seemingly. Minus M2. I, I think that there should be some problem here because uh, it shouldn't cancel out. Okay, the, the logs will be uploaded and it will be clear how to how to maintain it. It seems that it, it cancels out, so then there will be M load here, which is a bit strange. And then for Q2, there is a, there is no nothing here, and there is M2 plus M load from these terms, and of course from these terms you will have some other other terms in the general force vector so it's also a homework to complete it but basically I think you got the idea how to derive the Lagrange equation of motion and, uh, and I think we can finish it today this material will be uploaded into the YouTube so you can also check it without Facebook it will be available from Moodle and in the Moodle system I will upload the lecture notes and, uh, and the homework which is very similar to this kind of calculation will be published soon, maybe next week and then you can start to deal with it. So thank you very much and if you have some questions please ask. So thank you again for being here and uh, we'll meet each other again uh, next week. Goodbye.